Hi, I'm Diane Marie Collins and you have entered the DM Zone. Today I am visiting with Roger Cole. He is a co-founder of the Southwestern Premier Artist Group and they are today holding their inaugural event at the Pueblo Grande Museum. Welcome, Roger. Thank you. <laughs> I want to talk about this incredible work of yours, pictorial leather sculpture. Yes. Okay, and this is so unique. You, you do it with two tools, which we don't have to show today, but that's all right. I want you to talk to me about how you came about this. Leather is traditionally hammered, and when you hammer it, it gets a hard, ed hard edge look that looks like a craft project. I needed a softer look that uh, was more conducive to a fine art look. Uh, a clay modeler's spoon and a swivel knife gave me that soft look that I needed. Totally hand done, but the beauty of it is, is you can carry your entire shop in your shirt pocket. <laughs> the wonderful thing about it when you look closely at the work, it's 3D and then you have painted on top so you start first with the hide and then walk me through some of the other steps. Once the hide is done to where it's stretched and holding the shape and form that you need, then there are hand-painted dyes that go onto it. You want dyes rather than paints because leather is like a sponge and you want the dyes to pull into it, nothing on the surface. Finally, there's a sealant put on that protects it forever, permanently sealed. And then finally, Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. Now, tell me about Sleeping Beauty. I had no idea. Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, talk to me about that. It's a great name because you can't forget it. <laughs> but it's Arizona, and the wonderful uh, legend of the Superstition Mountains gives you the location. Right up behind Superstition are the little copper towns, and there are five shafts that are all called Sleeping Beauty because it's on the same vein. So it's all Arizona turquoise, and uh, like I said, you cannot forget that name, Sleeping Beauty. Well, it has that unique color of turquoise. I mean, because I've got turquoise from Nevada and turquoise from Persia, but this turquoise reminds me as a child growing up here in Arizona, it is that unique Arizona turquoise. It's the sky stone. The primitives believed that it would protect you from thunder and lightning, and they would wear it usually as a necklace form, and they felt that the superstitions were the lair of the thunder god because of the violent thunderstorms in the summer. So this was their protection. So it is something that has history connected to it. It's wonderful. You've been doing this how long now? 32 years full time. And it's been the best 32 years of my life. And you, um, I, I, you have a phenomenal number of hides that you have used in those 32 years. Just tell me, I, I've got to uh, have you say it. There's a learning curve to everything. <laughs> I have uh, a body of work out that totals somewhere in the range of 14,000 leather pictures. That's not bragging rights for numbers, it's a ton of experience. Mm -hmm. But I have also ruined more leather than any living human to get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a modesty showing through, but it doesn't, the work that you've shown here today is wonderful. The um, idea of the Pueblo Grande Museum show, was this a joint one with uh, your partner Judy, or was this all on your own, or how did this come about? Judy is an incredible person in that she has incredible ideas. And one of the things we did here, because she is Choctaw, we did the All Native show here in December, but we wanted something that would embrace the cultures here. So we discussed it and discovered that at the turn of the last century, you had not only the cowboy Indian thing, but you had the Hispanic, the Chinese, the Irish, everybody in between. So we wanted to develop something with the museum that would be a fundraiser for the museum. They would embrace not only the, uh, the music, the dances, the artwork, all of these things combined to create a real destination event for this museum that would really keep it on the map and raise funds for it. That's a wonderful idea and as a Native American I agree with you that we need to remember every culture that came in and formed our state. It's, it's exciting and what do you hope for in the future for this? 
Next year is going to be a centennial year for the state and there's going to be additional funding allotted in, in, with the museum and with uh, sponsorships and things. We want this to grow. We would like to see it double in size next year. We want the advertising to be supreme on this. And we are having a lot to do with the state and with the state officials on this coming event. We are very proud to be the ones that were uh, asked to produce the event. And we do have experience in that area and we like a quality show with quality artists who represent their own work. So many people here are museum level. The public has to see these fine people and really uh, come out and join with us. This is a celebration and it shouldn't be passed. This can only grow and become better and better and better every year. Well, it looks like attendance is really very, very well attended, and I would also like to say, if someone loves your work, which I do, how would they find you on the web? Well, they would uh, pull up, if you just type in Roger E. Cull, okay. you will get so much information. I will come up first and at length, and that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. But uh, we have an, an incredible amount of information out there on our art and on our artists. If you can't remember that, just remember Southwestern Premier Artists. That will also get you right into all of our people. I think that's wonderful. Thank you for visiting with me today. DM, thank you so much for having me, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be visiting with you. It's great. You have been in the DM Zone. Come back soon.